Good afternoon. My name is Regina Mendocino and I'm the Director of Community Development for the City of Berwyn. My department administers community development block grant funding from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, otherwise known as HUD. In late August, we announced a partnership with Housing Forward to provide emergency assistance for those that have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Funding for this comes from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and it's received through the Community Development Block Grant Department. On June 11th of 2020, the city posted a public notice for agencies to apply for, the, for CARES Act grant money. Housing Forward has the staffing and capacity to administer the grant. They received funding from the city of Berwyn to administer this grant for rent, mortgage, and utility assistance. Joining us today from Housing Forward is Romisha Tucker and Elvis Lomelli. Um, sorry, the Stability Program Services Program Manager at Housing Forward. Ramesha, this program has been available to residents who need mortgage, rent, and utility assistance who currently reside in Berwyn. How can residents apply and what will they need to submit? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, residents can apply. Um, there is a banner across the screen, they can click on that banner. Um, it's going to take them through to um, another website that is called the Health Hub. Um, once they get to the Health Hub, um, it takes them directly to Housing Forward site. They're gonna click, it says, get help. They will fill out all amounts of contact information, like their name, their phone number, their email address. And once they complete that, and they submit that, there will be emailed directly to Housing Forward staff and either myself or Elvis Lavelli um, will be in contact with them to screen them for assistance. So we have seniors and Spanish speaking families that might require additional assistance due to the inaccessibility of the internet or who there's language barriers. Where can they call for help? So we have a 1877 number that those clients, they can call and they have Spanish speaking staff and they will call that number 1-877-426-6515 and they will explain to the call center operator that they are a Berkeley resident and that they are in need of, whether it be rental, utility or mortgage assistance. Um, and they will be pretty um, and then again, that will be sent to housing. Can you go through the screening process a little bit? Yes. Um, do you want me to go through it, the screening process from the hub or the screening process from the call center? The call center. Okay, so, um, and this can be a little confusing for um, some people, so I wanna make sure that you know it's clear. So a person would call the call center, the call center operator is going to um, ask a couple questions, um, mainly um, the person's uh, name, um, where they're calling from, their zip code, um, their phone number. Um, they're going to ask them, you know, where did they sleep last night? Most um, people are going to say they slept in their own home, whether it be a rental property or whether it be their own home that they own. Um, and then from there, they will ask them, um, you know, how many people are in their household, including them. So if it were me, I have two kids, I would say three. Um, and then it's going to ask them um, what their household income is. Um, they will ask them um, how much of assistance they are seeking. And then they're just going to ask them to give them just a little um summary of why they are in need of assistance so um i can role play a little bit i would um call and i would let the person know um i lost my job in march um due to covid the place where i was working they laid me off i haven't been able to find work since um i was maybe denied for unemployment or um maybe my unemployment exhausted or just hasn't been enough for me to sustain my household. I need assistance to get caught up with my rent, 
my Comet bill, my um, my Nightcore bill, um, and this is why. And then they're going to take that little note, and then they will send it off to housing folks. So that's the pre-screen process. Um, once they have completed the pre-screen process through the call center, again, either myself, Elvis Melly, or maybe another staff member will call that person back. And then this is where they're going to get into more detailed inst um, instructions um, and information. And so this is where you take a deeper dive into, you know, when did this happen? What were the dates? And then um, if we... Uh, deem that this person is eligible for this specific assistance, we are going to provide them over the phone a list of documentation that we're going to need them to submit so that um, they can apply for the assistance. Um, at the end of the conversation, we're going to ask for email. Address. We will then email the person that same list of documents that we talked about, um, and we will go over our phone conversation so that they can in turn return those documents that we send to them and whatever supporting documents that we have asked of them. And so verbal residents can get that information back to housing forward one of three ways. Um, they can always um, scan it back to us um, if they, they have a scanner. And then sometimes there are apps on our phones where we can take a picture and it scans and they can just email it all back to us they can fax us, or they also have the option where they can drop the documents off at our office. So we're currently right now not seeing people face to face. We're not meeting with people face to face. But if a person were to need to drop off some documents, um, we have a drop off slot, a mail slot. They can slide those documents there. Um, if it's something that they need a copy of, um, they can let the person that they're working with know. They would let Elvis know, um, I can come by on Monday. Um, I have my social security card, my ID. I need you to make a copy of it. And he'll know, you know, they'll set up a time where they're going to meet. He will come get the documents, make the copies, um, give the originals back to the person, and we will proceed on with the application process. So HUD has very, very specific requirements and we have to follow all requirements and protocols. So can you go over how eligibility is determined? Yes. Um, so basically these funds are meant for those who were directly affected by COVID. And for different people that can look different ways. So it could be a case of in the scenario that I mentioned earlier where the person was laid off and the income that they have ceased to exist. So there's no more household income or there was a significant decrease in the household income um, that they have. So it could be that maybe the main breadwinner lost their income and maybe the other person in the, um, in the house, they have enough to maybe cover, you know, some bare necessities, but it's not to cover the big things because that income was lost. Um, so you would have to have, you would have to be able to show that you are financially affected by this pandemic. Um, there are some um, parents who have been working and maybe they had to stop working because um, we did shelter in place and they had to stay home to be with their kids. Again, that's gonna show a significant loss of what that income used to be and it all goes back to the pandemic. Um, so those are some scenarios on um, just to show like how uh, financially a household would be impacted um, and what documentation we would ask of a person who's applying. We are also um, going to ask that that person supply social security cards, um, birth certificates for children or passports um, or um, matricula um, if they uh, if they don't, Im immigration status is not a factor um, in the funding. We are going to, they will have to show proof of ownership. So if they're renting a unit, then we're gonna need a lease or a rental agreement. 
And if a person doesn't have a lease with their landlord, because we do have that, we have a document that Housing Forward can provide. Um, that is a rental agreement that they that we can use in place of maybe someone who's on a month to month verbal type lease. Um, so we do have that um, that support in place. Um, outside of that, if it is a mortgage, um, if it's a, a homeowner, we're going to ask that they submit um, documents uh, from their lender that shows that their name is on the mortgage and you know all those in the household are also um, on the mortgage in a ledger. And um, this is a rent ledger as well from the landlord and also a rent ledger um, from, well, not a rent ledger, I'm sorry, um, the mortgage um, statements, the monthly um, mortgage statements. We will ask that they submit that as well. Um, and then one of the most important things that we actually do ask for bank statements um, because we want to make sure that these funds are going to help the households who are most in need. So that means that they you know, they don't have extra money sitting in a bank account. They don't have a reserve of, you know, savings that maybe they don't want to tap into because this household, they might have that, but the next household doesn't. So at this point, if the household does have, you know, a reserve and savings that maybe they just don't want to touch, they would, they would not qualify for this assistance. Um, the household without would qualify for, you know, that assistance. Um, and we also are looking at households who have up to an 80% um, AMI, um, if they do have a house, uh, household income. Sorry, I'm flipping over my words. Um, and that's how we determine eligibility. Can you explain what AMI is? Yes, I can explain um, AMI. AMI, um, I know what it means in my terms. Um, let me try to explain it to you in simple terms. Um, the so we, we do know that it's area median income. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so basically, it's the amount of household income that a person um, that a person has. And when we say household income, we're talking about all of the household income. So if it's earned income, we would you we would calculate that in. If it is um, maybe a social security benefit, um, we would calculate that um, in as well. We do not calculate um, if a person is receiving food stamp assistance um, link. Um, that's not that's not included. Um, that's not cash, and you you can't pay um, a bill with cash. And so um, the AMI is calculated based off of what that whole household income is and how it's spread across um, the number of members that are in that sole household. Um, so the city will post the um, income guidelines on the webs on our city website so that people before they even initiate a call, they'll know where they fall in that parameter. Um, okay, so the city is very concerned about keeping families in their homes. Are there any restrictions for mortgage assistance? Um, the one restriction for mortgage assistance is that um, it cannot be a federal. Um, it can't be a federal mortgage loan um, because there are other programs available for those um, for those uh, residents who have those types of loans. So your FHAs, your Fannie Mae's, um, those, if you have that type of loan, we wouldn't. Um, we are working with these funds are for those with conventional loans. And how behind in someone's mortgage do they have to be before they can apply? They can be, um, it could be a month behind. We um, will provide them with three months of assistance, but if they're only, we can provide them with three months of assistance. Um, they do not have to wait until they are three months behind. Same thing with rent. We can um, assist them with three months of assistance, but um, a person would need to be at least a month behind on the rent and at least a month behind on the and same would go for the utilities. So if someone in the household has tested positive for COVID-19, do they qualify for assistance? 
Not necessarily. Um, only if the person who test uh, who tested positive, if their income was um, if their if their income uh, was interrupted due to um, that that testing um, positive. Um, we've had some households where people have tested positive, um, but they were able to continue to earn wages because they were just working from home. Um, or maybe, um, you know, they might have used a couple of, of sick days as well, but they're continuing to get paid. So just because you test positive doesn't automatically um, deem you eligible for um, for the assistance. Um, it, it's a case by case. Um, it's, it's We would take it on a case by case, but um, they would still have to show how them testing positive financially affected um, the household and um, created them an inability to be able to pay their mortgage, their rent, or, you know, their utility. So someone that's seeking rental assistance, is the landlord involved in the process? The landlord is very involved in the process. Um, as I was talking earlier, and I mentioned that um, we send an email uh, to the caller one of the um, reasons we send that email is because we are sending documents to the caller, the, the burden resident, um, that their landlord is going to have to complete. Um, and um, so it's a two part application process. There's documentation that we need from the residents in, and then there's also documentation that we need um, from the landlord's uh, end. And unfortunately, if the landlord is unwilling to participate, um, complete documentation, uh, the paperwork that we send, um, refuses to provide um, additional documentation that we ask for, then um, we would not be able to fund to assist that Berwyn um, resident. We, um, we try to leave that initial conversation with the resident because they have the relationship with their landlord. Um, if it comes to a point where you know the landlord isn't budging, then we will intervene because it might be a case of the landlord just really isn't understanding what um, the tenant, uh, the bourbon resident, is saying. Um, and so we, you know, we will intervene and, and advocate um, and explain more of the process because we really do want these landlords to work with us and to work with their tenants. Because, you know, the, at the end of the day, the landlord, you know, they, they do want to receive their rent money. They do have, um, you know, bills to pay just as with the, with the president. So we try to just frame it like that, you know, that you participate. It is a win-win for all parties um, in, involved. A renter is already behind and facing possible eviction. Will this stop the eviction process or is the landlord still able to evict? The landlord is still able to evict um, even um, with, with, with payment. So there was a, um, a moratorium that was in place and the moratorium that was in place, it, um, it went into effect in March um, and it's been extended um, several times um, since then. And so basically what the moratorium was doing was it was making um, so that people who were facing um, eviction or who were at risk of eviction would not lose their housing at this time due to unpayments. Of so a landlord can evict if the reasons that they're evicting them is not due to non-payment of rent. Maybe it's a lease um, violation. Maybe you know tenant is, um, has been doing you know some unsafe things in the unit. The landlord can evict based off of that. Um, the moratorium that is currently in place, um, it's in place up until next week on the fifteenth. Um, we are waiting to see if that moratorium is going to be extended. Fingers crossed, it will be. Um, it will be um, outside of that. When one of the documents that we send um, to the landlord and to um, the tenant, or you know the the person applying for assistance, is a landlord and tenant agreement form. So what that form does is um, the landlord signs, and basically they're stating that 
they're going to ex accept, you know, this money, this back rent that, that the client owes and in them accepting that it's going to guarantee the client at least another 30 days worth um, of residency from when they receive, um, from when they receive the funds um, outside of those, um, of those 30 days, if for whatever reason the landlord wanted to, um, the landlord, um, they, they would be able to proceed um, with, the, uh, with the eviction process. But again, one of the things um, that we do on our end um, is we kind of want to know where the landlord is coming from so that we can have these conversations, you know, with the client. So we'll say, you know, we talk, we talk to the landlord um, and they're saying, you know, you can stay until your lease is up or since you've gotten caught up, you know, they'll continue to have your month to month lease or, you know, they'll let you stay on a month to month, um, on a month to month lease um, because the, the purpose is to keep, um, is to keep families um, held. So if you're currently on a month to month, that's you can apply as well. You don't necessarily have to have a lease, correct? You do not have to have a lease. Um, what you what they will have to have is what we call rental agreement form. And so basically that rental agreement form is it is a month to month agreement. Um, and so again, in order for us to be able to release um, funds we need to ensure that there is an agreement, there is a tenancy agreement between the resident and between the landlord. So they will complete that in lieu of lease as well as the landlord um, and tenant agreement form that guarantees continued residency for at least um, 30, uh, 30 more days. Um, and so sometimes the 30 days really doesn't come into play um, it really just depends on how much, how far the person is behind in their rent. And so if we know, um, you know, that the three months of assistance isn't going to have that person at a zero balance, what we'll do is again, we will talk to them, um, to try, to try to come up with a plan. Um, if they do have some income in the household, then, um, you know, is a payment plan possible? for you and your landlord. Um, you know, what, what can be done to satisfy both of you and to keep you, um, and, and to keep the, um, the client house. Is the utility, uh, situation the same? Can the utility companies disconnect after receiving funds? They can disconnect, um, after receiving funds. What happens is, um, Once, um, once the we can still make the payment, um, that payment amount will be added to the balance. Um, will be added to what uh, what the tenant owed. Um, but again, when we make, we don't like making blanket um, payments. Um, so again, this would be an, another area where we would have a conversation with the utility company um, to say, you know, if we make this payment, can you guarantee um, that this person, um, that this household will continue to have um, use of these utilities? Um, and so sometimes what the payment that we make will do is it can do one of two things. Um, it could um, completely um, erase the balance and get them back to zero that they owe, depending on how much they owe. Or it could be that we paid enough to stop the disconnect and that payment made that household eligible for a payment plan going forward. And so we've been doing this at Housing Forward for, for like forever. Um, and so what we would do is we always, outside of these Berwyn funds, um, we, um, we'll work with that client to see what other services or resources that are available for them to reestablish um, the disconnect um, or even to um, see if they qualify for another grant that, you know, again, will alleviate some of what they owe if we were not able to completely erase what they owe. So we always make use of what of other resources. 
you uh, just kind of review the best way for people to contact Housing Forward once again? Yes. Um, so the one eight the one eight seven seven four two six six five one five. That is um, that's the call center. Um, the call center number. Um, outside of that, the person seeking assistance, um, there's a banner going across the screen. Um, they can apply through the, um, they can not apply, I don't want to use that word. Um, they can begin um, the process by going to Housing Forward's website, www.housingforward.org, and then you're going to backslash emergency hyphen housing assistance. Um, and once they click on there, it's going to take them to another website, which is called the Health Hub. Once they get to the Health Hub, they're going to automatically be on Housing Forward's landing space. And then there's going to be a button there, and the button is going to say, um, get help or contact. And the person seeking assistance will click on that, and then there's going to be fields for them to complete. First name, last name best way to get in contact, which is either going to be um, email, their um, their phone number, um, or text, because some people can't receive um, incoming calls. Once the person completes that and they submit it, it's going to trigger an email to housing. So it's kind of like they're sending an email, except they're not really going into their group or their Yahoo. It's just the email that gets triggered to housing forward. Then on our end, what we'll do is we will call the caller and we will screen them further and go over the entire process um, with them. So it is, it kind of cuts out the middleman um, of the call center. So like the call center, they do the initial pre-screen and then they send the agency. Um, with the hub, the person, um, there's no middle person. So it's going to come directly to housing folks. So we're directly screening and then we're letting you know right then and there if you um, seem that you are going to be eligible for assistance and this is the um, the documentation that we are going to need for you to um, submit to complete the application process. Um, it is important to mention that calling the call center that is not the person applying for assistance. Um, and even going to the hub, that is not them applying for the assistance. That's just, those are the initial steps to initiate the application process. Once we have all the documentation that we have requested from the client slash tenant and from the landlord, those documents will be reviewed. And then once that review has taken place, we will let both the landlord and the client know if they've been approved and what they have been approved. Okay, so this program is for Berwyn residents only. What type of documentation is going to be needed? Okay, so again, we're gonna ask for um, IDs. Uh, we're gonna ask for social security cards, um, birth certificates for the kids and or um, passports. Um, if it is a renter going to ask for the lease. If they do not have a lease, we will provide them with a, um, a rental agreement. If it is a homeowner, homeowner, we're gonna ask for a copy of, we're gonna ask for um, that the loan that they have is a conventional loan. And then we're also gonna ask for the statements because the statements will show how far they're behind. It will let us see when they um, fell behind. Um, and it also lets us know who to send the funds to, if the, which bank, which lender to send the form uh, to if um, the person is, is funded. Um, outside of that, we will request, um, we will request check stubs we will request um, bank statements. Um, we will also request proof of how this is COVID related. So if it was a furlough letter, if it was an email that the employer sent, um, if it was an unemployment award letter, 
um, the unemployment award letter will state the last day worked. Um, and it might say um, a reason such as lack of work or something like that. And if I look at the date and, you know, it's around the time that, you know, that COVID hit, you know, we can put the pieces to the puzzle um, together, but we will need them to document that this is why, this is how COVID financially um, affected them. And so this also goes back to when I mentioned that their application is going to be reviewed because we will review um, why they stated they got behind versus the documentation um, that they've submitted just to make sure that everything is um, clean, concise, and explainable, that it all makes sense. So if I were to call the number today to get the process going, how soon can I expect a return call from Housing Forward? Because of the influx, um, we tell people that they can expect a call uh, within three days. Um, and that just gives us time um, because we're also submitting applications, we're, we're gathering documents. Um, and if they haven't, um, if they haven't heard um, anything, um, then they can call the one eight seven seven number back, and that'll be a prompt to us. But um, outside of that, um, when they use the hub, if it's a person that um, we haven't contacted yet. We get um, another reminder email before those three days are up to trigger to let us know, hey, this person still needs to be um, contacted because there's no resolve um, in the system. So we have uh, constant reminders. Um, it's important for the residents to respond to the emails from the agency when we send you an email and we let you know what the documentation is that we need you to turn in. If, for example, maybe one of those documents you don't have readily or right now, don't let that be the reason that you don't respond to the email or that you don't call the agency back because it may be something that you know we have a workaround for um, because that will also delay the, uh, that will delay the process. Um, so if there's a document that you can't get right then and there to send back to us, that's fine. Send back what you have and just let the person that you're working with know that I don't have this document right now. Um, does that mean that you're never going to be able to get it? Um, what are certain circumstances? Because we will work with you um, in scenarios such as that. Okay, well, we are going to put this on the city's website so people can access the hub directly. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't see any other questions really coming in. Uh, if anyone does have questions, they could post it on the city's website. We will post the answers. We will ask for Misha and Elvis's input. Everything will be posted on the website and um, you know, we're here to assist. The city's here to assist our residents. So anything we can do to help, we will help. 